Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and remember, context is everything founder and CEO John Michael Monroy is reading a textbook, cover to cover. Today we start a new chapter, and in this chapter, nationalism triumphs in Europe. This is going to have some repercussions lasting 1800 to 1914 so i think we can kind of see where this is culminating to chapter preview section one building a german nation section two strengthening germany section three unifying italy forza suri nationalism threatens old empires russia reform and reaction let's start building a german nation setting the scene let's go Section 1. Setting the scene. The Prussian legislators waited restlessly for Otto von Bismarck to speak. They knew he wanted them to vote more money to build up the Prussian army. Liberal members of the parliament, however, opposed the move. At last, Bismarck rose and dismissed their concerns rose and dismissed their concerns germany does not look to prussia's liberalism but to her power the great questions of the day are not to be decided by speeches and majority resolutions that was the mistake of 1848 and 1849 but by blood and iron. By blood and iron. Otto von Bismarck, quoted in the modern and contemporary European history from 1815 to 1940, Shapiro. Shapiro? Bismarck delivered his blood and iron speech in 1862. It set the tone for his uh, policies in the years ahead. Bismarck was determined to build strong, unified German state with Prussia at its head. One second. Six seconds, sorry. New heading, hence the glasses. Steps Towards Unity In the early 1800s, German-speaking people lived in a number of small and medium-sized states, as well as in Prussia and the Austrian Habsburg Empire. Napoleon's invasions unleashed new forces in these territories. Impact of Napoleon Between 1807 and 1812, Napoleon made important territorial changes in German-speaking lands. He annexed lands along the Rhine River for France. He dissolved the Holy Roman Empire and organized a number of German states into the Rhine Confederation. Now, Rhine is spelled R-H-I-N-E. I think I'm pronouncing it correct but I very well, maybe not. At first, some Germans welcomed, if you want, that would be great actually, could you put the phonetic spelling in the comments below if I'm mispronouncing Rhine River, R-H-I-N-E, please subscribe and please like if you've made it this far. I appreciate your time, I appreciate your listening, and I appreciate you as a human being. Or if you just put this on as background noise for your dog, I appreciate you as well, Rover. Dogs don't tend to like me, though, so. Well, they do like me when I play guitar, but that's a different question for a different day. But we'll get to it. Leave it in the comments below. At first, some Germans welcomed French Empire Emperor as a hero with enlightened modern policies. He encouraged freeing the serfs, made trade easier, and abolished laws against Jews. However, not all Germans appreciated Napoleon and his changes. As people fought to free their lands 
from French rule, they began to demand a unified German state. Napoleon's defeat did not resolve the issue. At the Congress of Vienna, Machernik, who we've spoken about in depth, and I'm still not entirely sure who he is, but it is in the notes in one of these sections. Po- Machernik pointed out that unity, a united Germany would require dismantling the government of each German state. Instead, the peacemakers created the German Confederation, a weak alliance of uh, headed by Austria. Prussian leadership. In 1830s, Prussia created an ec- economic union called the Zwolfurin. Zwolfurin. Z O L L V E R I E. Z O L L V E R E I N. It dismantled tariffs between many German states. Still, Germany remained politically fragmented. In 1848, liberals meeting in Frankfurt Assembly again dismantled German policy, political unity, or demanded German political unity. They offered the throne of the United German State to Frederick William IV of Prussia. The Prussian ruler, however, rejected the na- nation, blah, 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 rejected the notion of a throne offered by the people. Bismarck and German unity. Otto von Bismarck succeeded where others had failed. Bismarck came from Prussia's Junker class, made up of conservative land-owning nobles. Bismarck first served Prussia as a diplomat in 1862. King William I made him chancellor or prime minister. Within a decade, the new chancellor had united the German states under Prussian rule. Master of real politik. R-E-A-L-P-O-L-I-T-I-K. That's how it's spelled. It's one word. Bismarck's success was due in part to strong will. He was a master of real politik, a realistic politics based on the needs of the state. Power was more important than principles. Although Bismarck was the architect of German unity, he was not really a German nationalist. His primary loyalty was to the Hohenzollerns. Hohenzollerns. H-O-H-E-N-Z-O-L-L-E-R-N-S. The ruling dynasty of Prussia. Through unification, he hoped to bring more power to the Hohenzollerns, strengthening the army. As chancellor, Bismarck moved first to build up the Prussian army. Despite his blood and iron speech, the liberal legislature refused to vote funds for the military. In response, Bismarck strengthened the army with money that he had been co- that he had been collected for the p- other purposes. He then was ready to pursue an aggressive foreign policy. In the next decade, Bismarck led Prussia into three wars. Each war increased Prussia's power and paved the way for German unity. Interesting. Look at this room. This is very clean. Their their uniforms are very clean. Almost something I could imagine being worn today in a ceremonial way. That is the crowning of a German emperor, uh, William I, in the center of the steps. (gasps) Wars with Denmark and Austria. Bismarck's first maneuver was to form an alliance in 1864 with Austria. They seized the provinces of Schleswig and Holstein from Denmark. Prussia and Austria liberated the two provinces, which were largely inhabited by Germans. 
and divided up the spoils. In 1866, Bismarck invented the, an excuse to attack Austria. The Austro-Prussian War lasted seven weeks and ended in a decisive Prussian victory. Prussia then annexed and took control of several other North German states. Bismarck dissolved the Austrian-led German Confederation and created a new confederation dominated by Prussia. He allowed Austria and four other southern German states to remain independent. Bismarck's motives, as always, were strictly practical. We had to avoid leaving behind any desire for revenge. He later wrote, we had to leave behind any desire for revenge. That's what Bismarck said after conquest. The Franco-Prussian War. Who's Franco? In France, the Prussian victory over Austria worried Napoleon III. A growing rivalry between the two nations led to the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. Germans recalled only too well the invasion of Napoleon I some 60 years earlier. Bismarck played up the image of the French menace to spur German nationalism. For his part, Napoleon III did little to avoid war, hoping to mask problems at home with military glory. Bismarck furthered the crisis by rewriting and then releasing to the press a telegram that reported on a meeting between King William I and the French ambassador. Bismarck's editing of the EMS dispatch, E-M-S dispatch, made it seem that William I had insulted the Frenchman. Furious, Napoleon III declared war on Prussia as Bismarck had hoped. The superior Prussian force, supported by troops from the German states, smashed the badly organized and poorly supplied French soldiers. Napoleon III, old and ill, surrendered within a few weeks. France had to accept a humiliating peace. The German Empire. And that will be the end of today. Thank you. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I do appreciate your time and your attention. And if this is on in the background for a dog, well, you're away. So the dog hears a voice. Thank you, little dog. Delighted the German Empire. The German Empire. That's the heading. Delighted by the victory over France, princes from the southern German states and the Northern German Confederation persuaded William I of Prussia to take the title Kaiser or Emperor. In January 1871, German nationalists celebrated the birth of the Second Reich or Empire. They called it that because they considered it to be the heir to the Roman Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, which is the heir to the Roman Empire? Is that what they mean? I'm not sure what they mean. A constitution drafted by, by Bismarck set up a two-house legislature. The Bundesrat, or upper house, was appointed by the rulers of German states, and the Reichstag the lower house, was elected by universal male suffrage. Universal man voting rights. Male voting rights. Because of the Bundesrat could veto any decision of the Reichstag, real power remained in the hands of the emperor and his chancellors. Thank you for your attention and your time, and thank you, little doggy, if you're listening. Uh, God bless. Have a good day. Enjoy the weather.